Hello, Afterthinkers. <laughs> this is Brandy Bensel from afterthoughtsblog.net. And today we're going to work on making a year eight schedule. So I already did one for an example video for year one, the first week of year one. So now I'm doing year eight. And I've done some prep work that you're not seeing in this video, so I just thought I would mention it. Um, the first thing is that I actually went through and did some things on my average day chart. And so um, I decided that this space right here for my year eight student needed to be more like 90 minutes and not just uh, an hour, which is what I had before. But typically he is released from circle time a little bit earlier than the others because near the end, I will do some things that are combining my younger students that he does not need to be there for because he's already done those things. Remember, he's you know, my next child after him is in year five. So he's got a three-year gap between him and the other students. And so um, I just decided to go ahead and make that official to give him more time to get his work done. So that's how that's going to look for three days a week. On Tuesdays, I think I made it maybe slightly shorter just because Tuesday is our day we don't have drill. It's, it's an early day. He has a class at one o'clock. And so we have to do everything kind of we have, to, we have to finish everything kind of early on that day. So I did that. The other thing that I did, I'm trying to think about what else I did here, um, is that then I went in here and I moved around the different things in this template. So I know one of you asked me to share my template, and I did that in the seven quick ta takes post for July 17th. Yeah, that was yesterday, July 17th. So I did that um, for the seven, seven quick take takes post. I shared that. But what I shared was not the one I ended up using because I ended up moving some things around. And so then I went ahead and made sure that my template here that I'm going to be working with actually matches up pretty well with the time that's available in this um, average day chart that I'm working from. Because I'm actually going to suggest that my student go through those things sort of in order. Not exactly in order. Like, I don't care if he moves around the assignments. I'm going to have a suggested order here, but I don't care if he moves those around in this space, except that and I, eventually we will probably figure out when the best times are for him to narrate, and we'll have to plan it around that. Since I've got four different kids narrating, we're going to have to figure out how to juggle all of that in this time. But um, I'm pretty sure that the best way for him to spend his morning time is going to be doing... 45 minutes of Latin and then 45 minutes of some sort of year eight reading that he can then follow up with a narration right away. So anyway, I went in, like I said, and I made sure that his template that I were working from actually matched up with that. Um, in fact, I wonder if I changed the other one. I need to I'm gonna go ahead and save this blank template here so I make sure I have another copy of it. All right, so we're gonna just gonna start working with this then. Now that I've plugged it in, I have it basically in the order I wanna go, then we're gonna do what we did with year one. And remember, I, what I did is I took the web page for Ambleside that has the week's schedule. So it's got all these different weeks and I just cut and pasted it into a Word document so that I can cut and paste from here. And so then if I get interrupted in the middle of this process, I know what I've done and I haven't done because as I do things, as I enter these assignments into the template, then they are deleted from this page. And so I, it's either on this page or it's on the template. It's not in both places. And so that's just a way that I keep track of this project because it's very easy to get interrupted in this project. It's 36 weeks. It takes a long time. All right, so here... I'm going to delete the Bible because he reads what he wants and his he's got this space, if you recall, in his chart down here. What he does here is he just writes in what he read that day so that I know what he's reading. And it's a form of accountability. I mean, he did read. He's very good about it, but I still think it's good for all of us to have accountability. So he writes down what he has read here. Um so where am I going here? Here we go. Okay, so the first thing I need is um, Case for Christ. And we chose to do Case for Christ and not evidence that demands a verdict.
both of those are valid options. It's just really I was choosing what we're already familiar with. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just put this right here. And I'm going to move on to the next thing. All right, so Churchill's New World. Okay, you know, another thing, I should mention this also. Another thing that I have already done that you're not seeing on this video is that I already, before I started, looked at all these chapters and familiarized myself with the books and decided what where these would fit. So I tried to make note of, you know, this particular book chapters are really long or really hard or whatever. Um, I looked at Churchill specifically because some of his chapters when we did his other book last year, Birth of Britain, some of his chapters were quite lengthy. What I found was that actually chapter one of the New World is not very long at all. And so I do not think that he needs 45 minutes. I was specifically trying to figure out which books should I be should I be doing 45 minutes for. Um, and so I tried to look at all of these. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm doubting myself on whether or not I did so. <laughs> but that's okay. All right, so um, we'll just see how far we can get on this. All right, so Churchill's New World Chapter 1 is not that long. So I'm going to say that's about, that'll work fine for this. And actually, you know what I'm going to do for this particular day, because I was doing a map drill here, there is an assignment here for mapping. It says trace and label the map in the book. So we're going to go ahead. And for this particular week, we're going to make that the map activity. So, yeah, he'll still do map drills in the future, but that's just a really good way to use up that little chunk of time there and not get too worried about it. So, um, go ahead and do this. Let's see. And Man for All Seasons. Funny story about this. So, I have bought three or four copies of this book because for some reason um, I find I, I find really pretty copies of it and they're so pretty and so cheap that I can't resist it. So then when I went to look at this, I cannot find A Man for All Seasons anywhere, even though I own multiple copies. So annoying. So I don't know how long this is, but I see that it says over the course of four weeks. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm just Cut and paste this in here. And let's see, how long is that? I looked at poetry and I didn't think we needed tons of time for poetry this week either. So I'm actually going to sometimes, okay, so sometimes I put literature into poetry if I have lots of literature in a week. So there's just so many assignments. I don't know how they're all gonna fit. So I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to put here one of four because we're supposed to spread over four weeks. And that'll be a note to me that later when I'm doing my pre-reading, I can note the page numbers for this because I hope that by then I will have found what I'm looking for. All right, so let me see here. I'm going to kind of reverse this process here. I need science for 45 minutes, so let me see if I can find something that fits for science for 45 minutes. Science is down here. Okay, so Napoleon, here, I had to make a call here because it says Napoleon's buttons or the first half of chapter one of Marbles of the Molecule. I bought both of those books. I guess I didn't realize it was an or. So I chose Napoleon's buttons because it seemed like something my child would be interested in. So what are the other options here? Chemical history of a candle. First studies in plant life. Okay, this one I can delete because we've already done signs and seasons. See? This takes a while. Sorry. I hope this video isn't totally boring. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and say that this is one of our 45-minute science selections here. Okay, so we got rid of that. And then this is the part that I didn't need here. Matching chapters to your, oh, I guess I deleted something. I was, oh, it's to your geographical area here. I somehow, all right. Let's see. Ah. Uh, Chemical history of a candle, lecture one, part one. That'll be another one of our 45 minute science times. So we'll put that over here. And I looked at the study guide a year ago, but I have not looked at the study guide recently. So that will be interesting. <laughs> All right, so here's another thing I do. When I have something that goes somewhere else, I put it in bold and I put it in red. And so it just reminds me that I need to do something with this. Um, and so that particular thing, we're doing adventures with some friends of ours. And I feel like there's another one we're doing. Oh, well, I'll find it. All right. So this will be that's what's left. Galileo. How many more 45 minutes do I have? Let's look at science. Okay. So I have two 20 minute slots and I have a 45 minute slot. So what do I have left for science? This and this, this actually, I think less left than I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a 45 minute spot and I'm gonna make note to spread it over five weeks. I'm gonna go here and say this is 45 minutes. I say one of five and like I said, later when I'm pre-reading, I'll make note of what I think are the appropriate pages for that assignment. And Galileo. Now for this one, because it says to spread him over the term. So I'm just going to tell him to read for 20 minutes. And then he can come to a natural stopping place and he can narrate to me. And that'll be the end of that. And it might not take all of the term. That's fine. All right. So grammar we're doing during circle time as a group. Yeah, I'll tell you later if that actually works. How to read a book we're not doing because we've taken a Latin, I mean, a logic class outside of outside of our normal homeschool hours, and so that takes up the time. Um, let's see here. Okay, Fierce Wars, Faithful Loves, Canto 1. That's some poetry here. And I'm sorry if it drives you crazy that I'm not going in order, but very honestly, I never go in order. I do the things that make sense to me, and then I see how to make the rest of it work after. Um, and Shakespeare's Sonnet 18 is poetry. So we're going to put that right here. All right, so what do I have now? I have one, two, three AO readings that are not geography and not science. Let's see what I can do here. Hmm, I don't remember what some of these are, so that's always interesting. Okay, so Westward Ho, chapter, here's the problem with this, is that chapter one is probably half an hour all by itself. Hmm. Let's think about this. Okay, we know rural hours is geography. So let's put that on there. And this is another one of those ones where I'm just going to say, read for 20 minutes and then narrate and we'll see what happens. But here, 
And Jansen, story of painting. I am not going to worry about that this particular week. We have it. We're going to do it. It's the first week of school, though, and so I try to keep things a little bit simpler for the first week of school. Oh, history of English literature, chapter 32. Okay. I know that that will take about 20 or 30 minutes. So let's see. What do we have here? So we'll do that here. Oh, I still have a little poetry thing right here, don't I? Oh, and I have an AO reading up here. Oh, see, you can't forget these things. Look at that. That's why I was trying to do the first part. Okay, well, that's good. It gives us more space. All right, so I did this one. Okay, so this is another one. This is sort of a reverse thing. I usually tack that on to circle time, and I let the others go. So I'm going to have to figure out how that's going to work exactly. But um, so he and I will do that at the end of circle time because I actually read that out loud to him and then we discuss it. Whatever happened to justice introduction note. Okay. I'm going to put this up here. Okay, Utopia, Introduction. Let's put that over here. And it does not need to say Alterner's translation. We already know that. Okay. So we have a history down here. Let's find a long history section here. Um, gosh, I'm almost tempted to put Westward Ho there because I think the readings are going to be longer than the other ones. What else do we have here? See, this is where I say we can flex categories. So, okay, so this says history 45 minutes and this says science 20 minutes. That's great, but if you chose a book where it makes more sense to say science 45 minutes and history 20 minutes for this particular week because of the length of the chapters, I say don't freak out. Just change it around because it makes sense that way. So anyway, that's my suggestion. I flex categories all the time, like down here when I moved poetry and made poetry something else. Just a thought. I think we get a little bit too caught up in categories. These things are really helpful, but I mean, there's natural stopping points and it doesn't hurt to spend five more minutes so you finish the whole chapter. I'm just saying, I'm not saying spend 20 more. I'm just saying because you might come across a book where now you're going to spend five minutes less on this one so that you don't go over the chapter because the chapter is a natural starting point. So with that said, okay, Voyage of the Armada. Is this geography? Darn, I wish I would have remembered this. I'm going to assume that this is something like geography. I don't know. Actually, you know what? I really am going to put Westward Ho in that spot because I just think it's going to need 45 minutes. Where did that go? Oh, it went here. Okay, so we don't lose it here. Let's see. Christopher Columbus, chapter one. I don't think that's going to take 45 minutes, but I'll put it there anyway. And we don't need the author title. That just takes up space. All right. Got rid of that. Roar on the other side. This is going to take like 20 minutes, maybe. It's not that long. It's just the introduction. 
so let's see what we can do with that. I think, yeah, see, there's this little tiny 20 minute slot. I know it says history. I'm not going to worry about it because that's where that's going to fit. You know, the first week when you're working with introductions and stuff, the introductions aren't really a good example for me to be using here because they're not necessarily the length of the other chapters. But I guess this is where we talk about just having to make a call. So just make a call. <laughs> You'll be okay. Westward Ho, another long chapter. Westward Ho generally looks like it's going to have long chapters. I haven't flipped through the whole thing, but I'm just saying it looks like it's going to be kind of the equivalent of that Mark Twain book we read last year. What was that the one on um, Joan of Arc? All right, Boys of the Armada. You know, we just don't need the author's name here. So let's do this. Wage of the Armada did not look super long, but I wouldn't say, I wouldn't necessarily say 20 minutes. But that's what I have. So I guess I'll make a note of how it fit. Okay, so that's another thing as we're talking about this. So I have in parentheses, this is how long I've planned for these things to take. Okay, but then there, there's what we've planned, and then there's reality. And so the first week or two, what I actually have my child do, unless it's ridiculously long, like let's say I planned 45 minutes over here for Napoleon's buttons, and let's say he's read 45 minutes and he's only halfway through the chapter. Then I tell him, yeah, stop, just stop and narrate what you've done and make a note of what page you stopped on or use a bookmarker or whatever. Bookmark, sorry, drives my husband crazy that I say bookmarker. Okay, so, but let's say he read it and it didn't take 45 minutes or let's say he read it and he was almost done when his 45 minute timer went off and so he went ahead and read five more minutes or something. What I have him do is I have him write next to that how long it actually took him. And we do this for the first two, three, sometimes even four weeks of the term it, um, is what we did last year for each term. Because with each term, you're switching books. And so your planning is sort of jumbled up again. So the reason why I had him do that is because it's going to help me make sense of whether or not this is actually working. So this is the plan right here, right? This is the plan. But this plan may not actually work. And I'm going to have to accept that if it doesn't work for some reason. One way of discovering whether or not it works is to do things like document how long these things are actually taking so that then we know. So I'm trying to, I, I'm going to make this smaller for a minute because I just can't see everything. Oh, I could also take off. Like, I could take off that. I could take off this. I could take off this. That would give me more space too, huh? Okay. So I'm trying to see, do I, do I have any spaces left? Let's see, nothing here, because math is just math, right? What is this? Let's see. Oh, there is a little tiny settings. Look at that. Oh, that's hiding for some reason. Why are you hiding? I don't know why that thinks it's supposed to be. Okay, so I do have this little tiny spot here. It's for physical geography. But you know what? I'm gonna put this right there because it will actually fit, which is so awesome. I was starting to think I was going to have to cut that. And I will say 1 of 12 because I'm supposed to spread that over. And so really, okay, I don't have my copy of this book yet, so I'm just guessing about this. But I looked online, and it looked like the whole play was less than 40 pages, maybe even less than 30 pages. So it says, you know, spread it over 12 weeks. So it's, I think it's going to be one of those things I use as fillers. If I'm doing a week and I have this little leftover spot here or there, that's where, how these things are going to end up. 
All right. I think I hear my kids getting home, so I should stop this video before <laughs> before they come in. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I feel like maybe I forgot to mention something. And I'm sorry if this seems a little haphazard, but I mean, this really was my planning session for this week. Like, I just let you be here for it. <laughs> so, um, not as exciting as you thought, right? All right. So anyway, sorry, I'm checking this again to make sure I'm right. All right, so that's how I planned week one. And we'll see how it goes. I, sometimes you're going to have a week where you have stuff left over and it just does not fit. And that's when you're going to have to make a call of um, what are you going to do? What are you going to cut? Because for the most part, we don't have more time. So, yep, my kids are home. Okay, bye.